Welcome or welcome back to the company of the cats. Hi, long time no see. It's been 84 years, but I'm quite busy right now and for the next couple of months too. So I will not be uploading as regularly as I have done so far. What is going on in the north though? What are we going to see in the winds of winter? First of all, if you ask me, there is no one grand conspiracy, at least not to the extent many theories suggest, meaning it's highly improbable for the northern clans along with Wyman and his lords as well as the Glovers, Mormons, and the people that are still south of the Neck to be on the same boat and have a way of communicating with one another and planning the return of the king in the north. Communication is not easy and not everyone knows the same stuff, so they can come together with a cohesive plan. Almost all of them want the same result, the Bolton's gone, and they do what they think is best and of course doable with their current situation. Wyman Manderley, Robert Glover and the people who are in communication with them have their own plan and this is what I'm going to talk about today. The northern clans do not have the same information as Wyman and Robert. The Mormons too are in a weird situation and the people that are south of the neck again are pissed with the Boltons and the Freys, but considering their current position it's a lot more plausible that they will have a role in bringing down the Freys and the Lannisters rather than the Boltons in the north. Let's start with the people we know for sure are actively trying to remove the Boltons and have a more thought out plan and not a go with the flow plan. House Manderley. The goal of the plan is to find Recon and make him Lord of Winterfell since he is the true lord and heir of the ancestral ancient seat of House Stark. How are they gonna do this though? They sent Davos to find Recon, yes, but they hardly gave him any help. A four year old, his dire wolf and a spear wife are not gonna defeat the Boltons. They want Recon because they are loyal and almost everyone wants to restore the Starks for one reason or another, but Recon's presence alone isn't gonna win the war. Roose Bolton has Lord Zedder's daughter. To thwart him, White Harbor must have Ned's son and the dire wolf. The wolf will prove the boys who we say he is should the dreadful attempt to deny him. That is my prize, Lord Davos. Smuggle me back my liege lord and I will take Stannis Baratheon as my king. Wyman is playing his part spectacularly, I would say, unlike Doran. <laughs> he knows because of Wex that Recon is not dead and he plans to retrieve him. After Recon's safe return to the Manderleys, the rest of the North can unite and fight to remove the Boltons from their position since how Stark's male heir is alive. I don't think Robert was initially aware of Wyman's plan. He arrived at White Harbor to raise men and Davos went against support for Stannis and Motherly included them in the plan after his performance in front of the phrase. His initial plan was to include only people he's sure are trustworthy until he has Recon under his wing. So the moment Davos and Robert made their move, he recruited them. The reasons many of the Northmen are tolerating the Boltons, even though they do not want them one bit and they have a major beef against them, since every house in the North lost family in the road wedding, are one, most houses do not have enough power right now to attempt a coup, and also many of their family members are in the Riverlands as hostages. Two, every male Stark is dead as far as they know, and three, the person that would take Winterfell would get married to Arya Stark, so the kids would at least have Stark blood. Wyman knows that if he starts slowly with the houses he knows would agree, like the Glovers, the Flints of Widow's Watch, and most likely the Locks, because even though Andrew Locke seems very much like a Bolton supporter, Wyman is 100% sure they will take lead from him only and there was also an unknown lock in Wyman's court. Other lords will follow, especially if he has recon. I have been building warships for more than a year. Some you saw, but there are as many more hidden up the white knife. Even with the losses I have suffered, I still command more heavy horse than any other lord north of the neck. My walls are strong and my vaults are full of silver. Old Castle and Widow's Watch will take the lead from me. My bannermen include a dozen petty lords and a hundred landed knights. I can deliver King Stannis the alliance of all the lances of the White Knife, from Widow's Watch and Ramsgate to the Sheephead Hills and the headwaters of the Broken Branch. All this I pledge to do if you will meet my price. Wyman has been building warships at White Harbor and hiding them up the White Knife and he has men too. So from the information we get, Wyman, along with other Northmen, has in mind to remove the Boltons and by finding Recon, they could win almost the whole North, if not the entirety of it, to their side with the exception of the Boltons and their men. Wyman left White Harbor to attend the wedding of Ramsay to Arya Stark, who is actually Jane Poole. In the meantime, the three Freys are killed and Lord Bruce Bolton, Warden of the North, at this point, moved the wedding from Baroton to Winterfell. 
When Wyman arrived at Winterfell, he brought a crazy amount of food, but no hostages, something that didn't sit very well with the Boltons. In the wedding feast, we have the iconic moment of drunk Wyman asking for Bradcook, something that has led a huge portion of the fandom, myself included, to believe that the pies he brought to the feast were the three frays he had at court. The phrase, were and still are very hostile towards him and Aenys and Hostin accuse Lord Manderley of being responsible for the disappearance of their family. They even blame him for the murders of the several men at arms in the castle. When little Walder Frey is murdered, Hostin again accuses Wyman, who denies the charges, yet at the same time insulted them, (laughs) which caused an enraged Hostin to attack uh, Wyman. Lord Manderley's throat was nearly slid open, but his knights intervened and Wyman's wounds were treated. And this is where things start to get complicated, because Rouge ordered Wyman to send his men to march against Stannis from Wittersfell's east gate. We do not know how many men Wyman has under his rule, but he sent 300 of them with a phrase. I do not claim Lord Wyman does the deeds himself, he brought 300 men with him, 100 knights. He does have more, but they aren't there, they are most likely at White Harbor, and this is where the main plan started to go wrong. Wyman told us that he has a lot of warships, and he can man them too. A few of them are in White Harbor, and the rest are in the White Knife. My question is, will the ships be able to sail the White Knife and reach Winterfell with reinforcements? It's doable on paper. People have been passing ships through the White Knife since the Age of Heroes. The Wolf's Den was built for this exact reason, to prevent slave ships and pirate ships from entering the White Knife. But on a practical level, they won't be able to move the ships easily, if at all. In the same chapters where Davos is informed of Wyman's plan, we do get a story. When old King Edric Stark had grown too feeble to defend his realm, the Wolf's Den was captured by slavers from the Stepstones. They would brand their captives with hot irons and break them to the whip before ship them off across the sea. And these same black stone walls bore witness. Then a long cruel winter fell, said Sir Bartimus. The white knife rose hard, and even the firth was icing up. Winter is here. The long night is here. Talk about a long cruel winter. People are already having a very hard time going from one place to another in the north. If the river freezes, I really don't see how the men, along with the resources, that the Manderleys have in White Harbor can pass through, or if they pass, how quickly they can reach Winterfell. And I think Wyman realized this maybe kind of late, or things took way more time than what he had in mind. But it doesn't really matter. What matters is that the reinforcements he had in mind will most likely be late and they are running out of time. On top of that, as far as we know, Recon is nowhere in sight, so presenting Recon to gain the support of the houses that aren't with them is out of the question for now. Enter Pink Letter. Who wrote the Pink Letter and, most importantly, why? There are many theories on who wrote the Pink Letter and there are also many videos. Queen the GM has a video that explains most of the possible authors and his final conclusions is that it's Wyman's work and I agree with him. But I want to give some more reasons and predictions on why he would do this, because it's not just that Wyman is in a difficult position. Wyman has the most reasons and all the information required to do something like that. And he also has the least counter-arguments on why he cannot be the author. Of all the possible authors, Wyman has the strongest case. The letter is written by someone who knows Ramsay well enough, knows enough stuff about Mans, and is trying to make John come south. Uh, This is the time I'm going to put a Winds of Winter spoiler alert, in case someone hasn't read the published chapters. I was talking with a fellow Greek Asoyaf enthusiast that watches my videos and suggested that Arnold Karstark has a maester with crows and he could be the one who sent the letter. Aside from the fact that Arnold cannot know some of the things mentioned in the letter, in Winds we learned that the crows were for Winterfell, not the wall. And Tybalt admits that he sent a raven with Stannis' location to Rouge at Winterfell. All in all, like other people in the fanbase, I really believe the letter was written by Wyman. Wyman right now has his men, who are in the area, with Rouge's forces. I don't believe the rest of his men can reach Winterfell in time, so he would want Jon to come and join him. Ideally with whatever forces he has, so he can back them up, at least until the rest of his own forces arrives. But there is also another reason, I think. They do not have Recon, but they do have a fake area that most of the North believes is the real one. Half of them are pissed and want to save Ned's girl. The others are not taking a stance and support the Lidlord. 
since Arya is a Stark and her kids will take Winterfell. What would happen if people learned that Arya is in fact Jane Poole and not Arya? There were very few survivors from the siege of Winterfell, and most of the household members who were familiar with Ned, Vian, Arya, and Jane are dead. So in Winterfell, the people who can say, hey, uh, this is not the right kid, are not many, and I doubt there is someone that people would believe a person whose word would hold weight. Many of the lords in the north had never met Arya, and the ones who did are either dead or south of the neck. Wyman knows for sure that this is not Arya. Not only did he ask for brave Danny Flint at the wedding, but he has met Arya before, twice. Arya did accompany her father on two occasions to White Harbor, and even though she was younger, Wyman saw a girl with a stark look, solemn long face and grey eyes. Jane is slightly older, with brown eyes, and doesn't look like a stark. And we know that because I doubt she would mock Arya if she looked like her. The thing is that Wyman has most likely been sitting on that piece of information for some time now, because he was waiting for Recon and his own forces to arrive, but considering how bad the weather is and how difficult communication and transportation have become, he needed a new plan. Luring John and an army at Winterfell to back up the cause until his men join him and having him vouch for Arya and win houses that up until that point were not with Stannis would be his best shot. John, a natural son of Ned and his spitting image, an undeniable Stark, will come along with forces and the fact that the Boltons were bullshitting everyone by passing another girl as Arya would become common knowledge. Because John can say she is not my sister, she is the daughter of our former steward, Vion Poole. I grew up with them. The thing is that John is dead, so even though I really believe he will go and take Winterfell after his resurrection, because let's be real, he's gonna be resurrected, there is no way he's gonna be in time to save Stannis. The very important thing Stannis will do, I think, is cause a huge amount of damage to Ruse's army. If the Boldons win a Pyrrhic victory, John, with his forces, as well as Wyman's remaining forces, would have time to come to Winterfell and could have a serious advantage. Even though my boy Stannis would most likely die and I'm not ready to be without him. <laughs> Picture a battle of bastards, but it is Wyman's forces and not the Vales, obviously, that come to the rescue. I have some other thoughts about last minute saves, but they are gonna be in another video. Going back to the story they told Davos for a hot minute, because I think it's foreshadowing. When old King Edric Stark had grown too feeble to defend his realm, the wolves then was captured by slavers from the Stepstones. They would brand their captives with hot irons and break them to the whip before shipping them off across the sea. And these same black stone walls bore witness. Then a long cruel winter fell, the white knife froze hard and even the fifth was icing up. The winds came howling from the north and drove them slavers inside to huddle round their fires. And whilst they warmed themselves, the new king came down on them. Brandon Stark this was, Edric Shadowbeard's great-grandson. Him that men called Ice Eyes. He took the wolves' den back, stripped the slavers naked, and gave them to the slaves he'd found chained up in the dungeons. It said they hung their entrails in the branches of the tar trees, as an offering to the gods. The old gods, not these new ones from the south. Your seven don't know winter, and winter don't know them. I think John represents Brandon, and the Boltons are the slavers who took their land. Brandon was called Ice Eyes, and John is a snow, and we do not know in what state he will be after his resurrection. If the Boltons suffer losses, don't have enough food, and on top of that, their asses are freezing, then a wildling army, along with the rest of the northern clans that we know support John, as well as the remaining men of Wyman, and whatever resources he has in White Harbor could give them the victory. Also, I would live for a no more bullshit John after his resurrection, give them to the people they skin in the dungeons, give them to the dogs, hang them from their own entrails, do something, please. <laughs> this is it, pretty much. These are my thoughts about Wyman and his plan, considering his position, as well as everybody else's position, and I think this is a very plausible scenario. I didn't go point by point about the pink letter, because there are countless videos, posts, etc. about it, and I would just repeat things. Part 1 is over. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, press a like, comment your theories and thoughts about it, and whatever else you want to talk about, and tune in for the next one. Until then, bye!